Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'll, I will switch to English for my talk as our slides are also in English. And I've seen a few people with headphones so they can take them off and other people can put them on. Uh, it might uh, make some pe somebody's ears uh, a little bit less warm. Um, my, ne my name is Barnaby Skinner. Um, I head the uh, data journalism department at Tamedia. Um, we're a core team of five uh, journalists and data scientists. Um, and a looser network of further five people uh, distributed all over the various other media titles of Tamedia and the country. That includes Berner Zeitung, Berner Bund, Finanz und Wirtschaft, and the French-speaking part, uh, 24 Heures, uh, Tribune de Genève, Le Matin Dimanche, um, and Tagesanzeige, of course, in Zurich. Um, we also have an infographs team, which we work with closely, and a further five members that are an inter interactive team that, uh, that do more um, uh, freestanding uh, work. And today, I would like to talk about data journalism um, and what it has to do with robot journalism, um, and also why coding skills are fundamental in journalistic work today, and why they will be even more so in the future. Um, now, firstly, I want to look at what data, data, data journalism is today. Then, I would like to talk about robot journalism and at the hope, hopefully at the end, bring the two things together. Um, so, what is data journalism? It's basically the application of technological skills to draw information from raw data. This skill, and the job profile also implies increased interaction of journalists who have the past primarily been writers, but now they have to interact with design, computer science, and statistics. On a lower level, the core skill of data journalists is to gather, organize, and manipulate raw data and use this data as the foundation of newsworthy or investigative stories. They usually do this using spreadsheets, especially used uh, as an investigative tool. It's a very powerful technique and has been the basis of various investigative stories that have had a global impact. I'm thinking uh, uh, specifically of uh, the collaboration of, uh, that resulted in the implant files last December or the Paradise Papers early on. The basis of these investigations was data journalism. On a more sophisticated level, data journalists expand their skills to coding beyond that of just utilizing spreadsheets. Computer code helps them gather, clean, summarize much late, larger data sets than simple spreadsheets do. They do this by automating m many of the data gathering or analytical process that goes on. And just like with science, it makes their reporting reproducible and shareable. The techniques are shareable. Depending on the size of the newsroom, some data journalists do the whole lot. They investigate the data and analyze and interpret it, build visuals, write stories. In other larger newsrooms, each step is in the hand of experts. Fundamentally, data journalism hasn't really changed anything about the profession of journalism. Many journalists have always been involved in sourcing new raw data and transforming it into information. Data journalism, coding, and computers have simply sped up this, the processing. And by doing this, data journalism has enabled new insights to be drawn from data and also new ways of telling stories. And this is something, of course, very important when you consider the various new devices and the media we consume our news on today. To a lesser extent, data journalism can also include knowledge of tools and insights of how news stories spread in the digital world, which content works and which doesn't. Let me give you a very brief, small example of how we practice data journalism. We recently ran a story on the quality of debates in the Swiss political TV show arena. This is a show that's broadcast every Friday evening and basically features the who or is who of uh, Swiss politics. But politicians and the general public regularly complain about how bad the quality of the on-air discussions are, with the four main participants continuously shouting over each other, not, not listening to each other, and on top of that, both sides of the political aisle complain on a regular basis about a lack of airtime compared to their opponents. We wanted to measure this and see which topics or which politicians caused the most commotion. To do this, we contacted Swiss Text, 
a company belonging to the Swiss Broadcasting Corporation. Swiss Text creates subtitles for more or less every show on Swiss television. They are actually provided to people with bad hearing, but anybody can access them. And whenever the participants of the arena are talking at the same time over each other, this is noted in the subtitles. Also, when the group laughs or whenever something else extraordinary happens in the show. So using the programming language Python, we fed the text 780,000 words of 90 plus shows broadcast over the past three years into our computer. And we developed a simple co code to count the mentions of commotion. We also made the computer take note of which, which guests were present. And we went then to have a cup of coffee while the computer did the heavy lifting. The results enabled us to statistically prove that whenever Christoph Blocher, the leader figure of the Swiss People's Party in Switzerland, a right-wing party, is a guest show, the commotion increases. We could even work out a recipe for karma discussions with less commotion, because whenever a Swiss minister takes part, the commotion decreases, especially when that minister is female, interestingly enough. Now, of course, this story is not going to change the world, but it highlights how simple speed of computation can help journalists tell comparing stories. Because once we had the data, in this case, unstructured text data, the subtitles of the shows, it took us a couple of hours to complete the analysis. And we also laid the foundation for more meaningful analysis, for instance, looking at, at how political topics fluctuate in the program. What has this got to do with robot journalism? A lot. But let me talk about robot journalism a little bit first. Just about every big media company is currently experimenting with robot journalism. Um, you have the Associated Press, Forbes, the LA Times, the Washington Post. AP produces around 40,000 automated stories last year, mostly in business and sports. Let me read you a short passage from such a text. It's from a baseball game. Jonathan Davis hit for the cycle as the New Hampshire Fisher Cats topped the Portland Sea Dogs 10-3 on Tuesday. Davis doubled in the first, homered in the second, singled in the fourth, and tripled in the sixth. New Hampshire had a big five-run second inning in the blowing victory, blowout victory. Not the most exciting text, I admit, but for a fan of the New York Hampshire Fisher Cats or the Portland Sea Dogs, desperate to find the results of their famous favorite team and possibly a little bit more information, possibly an intriguing and exciting read. Now, it's no coincidence that I chose an example of baseball. The more data, the more raw data you have, the more sophisticated the automatically generated texts can become. And baseball is notoriously well documented when it comes to data. Basically, what computer programs do is to organize and present data in a human readable way. Typically, the process involves an algorithm that scans the data, selects from assorted pre-programmed pre article structures, orders key points, it inserts details such as names, places, amounts, rankings, stats, other figures. And the most sophisticated outputs can even be customized to fit certain voice, tone, or style. We are far from anything like artificial general intelligence, where an algorithm actually decides on whether a story is relevant and then writes freely. In a robot journalism I am referring to here and what's happening today, there is still a lot of human writing involved. Every little text variant is actually written by a human, and the algorithm selects the bits and pieces according to the data or according to whoever is reading the story. It really isn't rocket science. And still, this technique fundamentally speeds up the process of journalistic writing and also increases the volume of news production. During the Olympic Games 2016, for instance, the Chinese site and app Totao published 450 automated articles without officially actually having any written staff. In the background, of course, there were a lot of people writing. Stories were published sometimes seconds after a competition was over. How well these articles were read, we don't know. Taito has never released the figures. But the Olympic Games 2016 may well be known as the first major sports event to be covered by robot journalism. Now, I'd like to talk a little bit more about Tomedia's experiment with, data, with robot journalism.
we are exploiting the very special situation of the regular popular Swiss voting system. Three times, four times a year, the Swiss population votes on things like whether to stop building minarets or whether to increase the amount of legally binding holidays or whether to adapt European gun laws. The next vote is actually on that, whether to adapt European gun laws. The Swiss Statistical Bureau offers the vote results on municipality level about 6 or 7 p.m. on voting day. And our robot, we dubbed him Toby, uses these results to create short texts summarizing the vote of 2,222 Swiss municipalities. Let me give you an example of how the system works. We have now implemented it for the past four Swiss national votes. Last November, the voters voted on three issues. One, whether Swiss law should be above international law. Two, whether insurances should be allowed to spy on their clients. And three, whether Swiss farmers should be allowed to clip their cow's horns. Three wonderfully Swiss topics. The Swiss voters ended up not wanting Swiss law to be above international law, but were happy with the insurance spies and with clipping cow's horns. At approximately 6 p.m. on 25th of November, the Swiss Federal Bureau of Statistics published provisional results. These provisional results are usually correct in Switzerland. Swiss are very good at counting and, uh, and with numbers. Approximately one hour later, the daily newspapers, news sites, Tagesanzeiger, Berner Zeitung, Tribune de Genève, and other media publications asked our readers whether they would like to know how their municipality voted. They were asked for the postal code they were interested in, and then asked to, to click yes or no, depending on how they voted. Or, the way they felt like clicking that doesn't have to be their vote, of course, about international law, about spying on insurances, and cow horns. And with a further click, they then received a short summary of the results where they, stood in, where they stood in comparison to the vote of their municipality in the cantons and on a uh, federal level. That's an example of a, of a text people will receive on their mobile phone then. So within the next hours, the system created thousands of texts for 100,000 Swiss voters from 98% of all the municipalities from all over the country. Is that a, a success? Are these numbers good? Reaching 100,000 users in Switzerland is a, is a good result, but considering the reach the media has with its publications, it reaches about half of the whole readership in German and French-speaking part of the country, so several million, is still a long way to go before you can call it an overwhelming success. Um, and also considering some of the written stories had a much larger reach than these uh, automated stories, or the, as the automated stories as a whole. But what, what is very pro promising, though, most of the users were naturally from Zurich, the biggest canton and city in Switzerland, but 50% of the traffic actually originated in remoter municipalities. So in other, other words, the robot is creating coverage that wouldn't be possible without it. This is new content, and not content that is com competing with currently available stories. Is there added value? To the readers in remote areas, definitely, they're receiving coverage they wouldn't co receive otherwise. I myself live in a rural area of the country and really appreciate the fact that you get an idea of how people around you are, are voting instantly. Um, this engages me. The most impressive aspect about Toby, however, is how many different skills come together and how data-driven skills are at the core of the service. We had data journalists preparing code so that, that once the data from the Swiss Federal Bureau of Statistics is ready, the data can be transformed into information at a click. To do this, traditional political reporters prepare the text using Wordsmith, a tool by an American company uh, to, to simply transform the to uh, manipulate the text accordingly. These traditional reporters obviously need writing skills, but they also need to cover, they also need this, uh, the, the knowledge of how the code is actually working. And finally, the output is packaged into a user and reader-friendly and engaging environment, and this is done by a designer, who again needs knowledge of how to organize and deal with the data. Now, of course, publishers who are hoping to merely cut costs with robot journalism may consider this a downside. The actual text output may be larger, but the development still requires 
clocking a lot of man hours. They may be slightly decreased in future, but many of them, the majority of them won't. To keep Toby going, an entire team needs to manage the text and very importantly, the data processing and the design. Yes, robot journalism means a lot of human work. So at this point, I would like to bring the two together. What I said at the beginning about data journalism and robot journalism. Because at the heart of Toby are data, is data journalism and coding skills. And to make Toby work and provide a very individual news experience on voting day in Switzerland, the journalistic skills set, set must, this journalistic skill, skill set must be dramatically increased. Journalists no longer just write and have deep knowledge on the political implications of the voting, of voting results. Journalists also need to coding skills to analyze the data and prepare the analysis for voting day. They need knowledge of all various outcomes that can be predicted to prepare the text. And they need knowledge of how to design the results targeting mobile users. This is, doesn't have to be done by one single person, of course. Impossible, probably. But it's teamwork. And there are, of course, more results, again, as a kind of side product of the domain development that can fundamentally improve the quality of journalism. I'll give you a few examples. We've processed the data and we know how it is structured, so within a few seconds, we can also work out which communities voted very tightly. This could provide a nice material for detailed feature story at a, at a later point. Another insight would be to understand how much the weapons vote is actually a vote on Europe or whether it's a vote on actually weapons in Switzerland. Or Many code snippets we, can, we develop will be, we will be able to integrate into new workflows, like last weekend we experimented with a personalized uh, robot to give people their results in the, uh, in the GP, a, a large race in the city of Bern. People can provide their, their name and they get a little re personalized report of how they competed within the large group. Fundamentally though, my message is that journalism, robot journalism, remains a craft. And with artificial general, general intelligence such a long way to go, at least that is the way it seems currently, journalists are by no means made redundant by robot journalism. Their skill set just needs to be increased. In other words, and applying this thought to me, not to merely journalism, but to all fields, AI and coding are not replacing entire professions, but rather substituting some specific professional tasks. Lawyers are employing code to calculate the probability of a certain outcome in court. Radiologists are using algorithms to diagnose cancer. And journalists are using code to gather new data and make new insights to increase their journalistic output and even to provide personalized experiences for their readers. The truly heavyweight development obviously demands highly trained computer and data scientists. But the application of their developments requires data, literate lawyers, doctors, or journalists. In other words, professionals in the modern day workspace must acquire basic programming skills, giving them the lingo to mingle in the open source community to discover powerful coding libraries for like the statistical kit pandas or the machine learning tool scikit-learn. Because I really believe that in the workplace of today, tools, that all the tools they are for free, the ideas, and the data, and most importantly, the knowledge of how to use and analyze this data carry value. And this is why I believe journalism to have a very, very bright future. Um, thanks a lot for your attention. I'm available for questions if we have any time left. Thanks. <laughs>